many organizations, such as businesses, government departments, supermarkets, universities, and hospitals for example, have a number of branches, divisions, or sections in order to deal with a variety of functions, or different geographical areas. Each branch, division, or section may itself be split up into smaller units. It is possible to regard each branch, division, or section, or each unit within these as an organization in its own right. Organizations require information in order to carry out the tasks and activities for which they are responsible. The information that these organizations need could be categorized in a number of ways. See example below. An entity may represent a category of people, things, events, locations, or concept within the area of consideration. Attributes An entity may have one or more attributes associated with it. These attributes represent certain characteristics of the entity. For a person, attributes might be name, age, address, etc. Using the entities and attributes shown above, the following are examples of one set of values for a particular instance of each entity. Every occurrence of an entity will have its own set of values for attributes it possesses. If the value of certain attributes or Perhaps just one attribute is known for a particular entity. This enables us to discover the value of other attributes associated with that entity. The attributes or attribute which possess this quality are known as keys because they are able to unlock the values of the other attributes that are associated with that specific instance of an entity. Key one or more attributes may act as a key, unlocking the other information stored about an individual. An attribute that uniquely identifies a particular instance of an entity is known as the primary key, or sometimes just the key. Candidate keys. Where there is more than one set of attributes which could be chosen as the primary key for an entity, each of these groups of attributes are known as candidate keys. Foreign keys. When a copy of the primary key for one entity is included in the collection of attributes of another entity, the copy of the primary key held in the second entity is known as a foreign key. A foreign key enables a link to be made between different one-to-one -one relationships between two entities. Relationships between entities and attributes between attributes and between entities can be shown in a variety of diagrammatic formats. One common method is to use entity relationship diagrams where each entity is represented by a box and each relationship is shown as a line. You may also come across diagrams which employ ellipses to represent the attributes belong to each entity. The style of the line shows the type of relationship being represented. Here, in order to represent a one-to-one -one relationship, a single straight line is used between the two entities. The overall relationship between ticket holders and seats is one to one for each performance. The entity relationship diagram above shows the one to one link between a ticket holder and a concert hall seat. One to many relationships between two entities. An orchestra will have more than one musician playing a particular type of instrument. For example, it is likely that there will be several members of the orchestra, each playing a violin. The relationship is therefore one to many, from a type of musical instrument to a member of the orchestra. An individual may attend a series of concerts during each season. As a member of the audience, the relationship between an individual and the concerts is one to many. Many ticket holders will attend each concert. The relationship between a concert and members of the audience is also one to many. As the relationship is one to many on both sides of the relationship, the relationship that exists between the two entities can be described as many to many. We could also identify a one to many relationship between a concert performance and a ticket. Each ticket for a particular seat will be for only one performance, but there will be many performances each with a ticket for that seat. Entity Integrity All entities in a database must be identified by a primary key. It is therefore important that this key always has a known value. It cannot be allowed to have a null value. This is known as Entity Integrity. 
we need to be certain that, when we refer to another entity in our database, that it exists. This means that, when we have a foreign key in one relation, that the foreign key refers to an existing tuple in another relation. If that tuple is deleted at some stage, it is important that, all reference to the tuple is also deleted. If this is not done, any attempt to access the deleted tuple will result in an error. This can be implemented for example in SQL, in which we can specify for example, that, if a request is received to delete a tuple from a table, one of the following actions will be carried out. Restrict. If there are foreign key references to the row to be deleted, the delete will not be allowed to take place. Set to null. Any foreign keys referencing the primary key of the row to be deleted will be set to null. Delete cascade. Any rows containing foreign keys referencing the primary key of the row to be deleted will also be removed. The relationships that we have seen so far have all been between two entities. This does not have to be the case. It is possible for an entity to have a relationship with itself, for example, an entity staff could have a relationship with itself as one member of staff could supervise other staff. This is known as a recursive or involuted relationship and would be represented in an entity relationship diagram as shown below. It is also possible for more than two entities to participate in a relationship. Degree of a Relationship the degree of a relationship indicates the number of entities involved. In general, an NRE relationship exists when an entities participate. We can extend the entity relationship model by declaring that some relationships are mandatory, whereas others are optional. In a mandatory relationship, every instance of one entity must participate in a relationship with another entity. In an optional relationship, any instance of one entity might participate in a relationship with another entity, but this is not compulsory. Participation condition or membership class. The participation condition defines whether it is mandatory or optional for an entity to participate in a relationship. This is also known as the membership class of a relationship. As there are two kinds of participation condition, mandatory and optional, and most entities are involved in binary relationships, it follows that there are four main types of membership relationships, as follows. Mandatory for both entities. Mandatory for one entity, optional for the other. Optional for one entity, mandatory for the other. Optional for both entities. We would expect any member of staff in an organization to work in a given department, but what happens if a new department is created or a new member of staff joins? If we look at each combination in turn, we can see what the possibilities are. Mandatory for both entities. A member of staff must be assigned to a given department, and any department must have staff. There can be no unassigned staff and it is not possible to have an empty department. Mandatory for one entity, optional for the other. Any member of staff must be attached to a department, but it is possible for a department to have no staff allocated. Optional for one entity, mandatory for the other. A member of staff does not have to be placed in a department, but all departments must have at least one member of staff. Optional for both entities. A member of staff might be assigned to work in a department, but this is not compulsory. A department might, or might not, have staff allocated to work within it. 